Hello, stakeholders. Welcome back to the review of Comstock's quarterly stakeholder perception analysis report. I'm Trevor with RBMG, Comstock's U.S.-based investor relations firm, and I'm pleased to have with me the company's executive chairman and CEO, Corrado de Gasparis, who will be addressing the results from the first quarter, which covers trends related to the company's perceived strengths, weaknesses, and milestones. The report is now live on the company's website at comstock.inc slash investors. Again, that's comstock.inc slash investors. For those new to the story, Comstock has emerged as a leading innovator of breakthrough decarbonizing technologies that are now enabling the energy transition by delivering solutions that efficiently convert underutilized natural resources into renewable energy products. Comstock is currently commercializing three dedicated businesses. Comstock Fuels, which can convert now woody biomass into the highest yielding, lowest carbon renewable fuels. Comstock Metals, which is now recycling end of life solar panels with zero landfill impact by reusing all of the critical metals and materials. And Comstock Mining, which holds significant gold and silver resources in a historic world-class and target rich district in Nevada, and is now dramatically expanding its precious metal resources and mine plans in conjunction with its investment in GenMat, a physics-based generative AI-enabled mineral discovery technology. Comstock Inc. is listed on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol LODE, trading at about 37 cents with an average daily volume of about a half a million shares and a market cap of 43 million. Before digging into the report, with Corrado, please note this discussion may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties that it may be out of the control of the company and should not be construed as a recommendation or a solicitation to buy or sell any security. For Comstock's full disclaimer, please visit their website at comstock.inc. Lastly, RBMG is not a registered investment advisor or broker-dealer. For more information on us, please visit rbmilestone.com. Now with the housekeeping behind us, Corrado, welcome back. Thanks, Trevor. Always great to reconnect on the progress we're making operationally and to provide an update on our stakeholder sentiment. Likewise, Corrado, there was a total of 82 stakeholders who participated in the Q1 survey, of which nearly 90% are current shareholders. It's also worthwhile mentioning that 13 of the participants fall within the top 50 shareholders, excluding management and board members. Let's first discuss Comstock's perceived weaknesses and how stakeholder sentiment has changed over the last three quarters. It's great to see various weaknesses continue to decline. It looks like stakeholders believe the team has done a better job at effectively telling the story, in particular, how the company operates as a system that accelerates the commercialization of decarbonizing technologies in different markets. The primary two concerns in Q1 seem to be Comstock's technologies reaching commercial uh, commercial adoption and contracts for revenue. Corrado? Yeah, thanks, Trevor. I mean, those two perceptions are both extremely relevant and timely. Let me address the revenues first. During the first quarter, we received all of our permits for our solar panel recycling facility, and we began commissioning the plant. We have now crushed, conditioned, and separated materials successfully, and we'll start operating the system continuously very soon. Just as importantly, we've been overwhelmed with the quotes for taking end of life solar panels. We received over 60 tons of panels and collected cash on most of those already. We're also processing quotes in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and frankly racing to expand our capacity for storing them all. Despite having already received cash for accepting the panels, we don't actually recognize gap revenue until we fully process that, which is imminent. In Q2, We'll have sufficient information on our cycle times, variable costs, fixed costs, and our plan for expanding our lead in this business. In this regard, we'll both be recognizing revenue and achieving commercial adoption with our customers simultaneously and validating our view of the size and market potential, which is increasingly large. When you reflect on the speed that we designed, permitted, deployed, and operated our technology and solution, you have to acknowledge we hit pretty well on all the milestones with a better outlook than we originally anticipated. So strong kudos to our metals team. Coming back to the concern about our technologies obtaining commercial adoption, 
Let's go to fuels with some highlights in that context. Our engagement in the field with our customers has increased exponentially. We're engaged with industry leading companies across the supply chain, and we expect multiple commitments and engagements with our technologies. With what we know and what all of our customers and growing systems of partners are learning, is there is simply no solution that can sufficiently supply renewable SAF, renewable diesel, or any other low carbon liquid fuel without a woody biomass or woody like biomass feedstock? Growing vegetable oils are too expensive and can't compete on CI scores, meaning less revenue with that feedstock. Anyone serious about SAF or renewable low carbon fuels needs woody biomass, needs feedstock sufficiently to achieve the goal. What we fully believe and what our customers are now better understanding is that our technology presents the best solution for sufficiency of feedstock, for cost, for revenue, and carbon intensity score. As I previously mentioned, this year we'll be announcing multiple adoptions of our fuel technologies, and those agreements will directly address shareholder concerns about commercial adoption. Thanks, Corrado. Now let's move on to the company's perceived strengths. Similar to last quarter, Q4 2023, Comstock's disruptive portfolio of technologies remains a top strength while we're seeing a continued increase in positive sentiment around your mineral estate and the team. Look, our, our technology portfo portfolio is certainly a top strength. And what's exciting to me is despite the fuels reporting CI scores of 15 to 16 and yields of over 100 gasoline gallon equivalents, we continue to innovate on higher yields. We continue to innovate on lower CI scores and we continue to push for lower costs. Internally, we're not only confident that our solution is industry leading, but we anticipate expanding that lead with what our innovations team has currently in our pipeline. I mean that without reference to GenMAT. When we consider how GenMAT and Comstock's internal use of physics and geophysics-based AI will impact our biofuels and mineral discovery developments, it should put us in even higher, possibly an entirely different class of innovation, which was always the plan with that investment. Our system is fundamentally built to innovate and our shareholders should expect to hear how that system will continue to expand with world-class partners or expanding our intellectual property and our lead. Frankly, it's understandable that there is concern over the first technology that we're commercializing. So both demonstrating commercial adoption in metals and fuels and effectively marketing it are our highest priorities right now. The commercialization teams are locked and loaded on that priority. Thanks, Grotto. And let's move on to Comstock's milestones. Uh, this quarter, stakeholders would have noticed that we separated the two GenMAT initiatives, namely the collaboration between Comstock Mining and uh, GenMAT using space-based hyperspectral imaging for mineral discovery, and the other initiative, which is focused on GenMAT's material simulation and synthesis using physics-based AI solutions. So the uh, two zero percentages uh, are related to Q3, Q4, which did not have any submissions due to the new milestone. Looking at the trends, it looks like stakeholders remain focused uh, on the and, and interested in Comstock's unlocking value, uh, the company unlocking value for its fuels business. Can you speak to this a little bit? For sure. You know, our partnership with Renfuel has been a huge enabler for us. And we can now deliver a high value, low oxygen oil to existing refineries. Renfuel is very well known and regarded throughout Europe and most of the advanced woody biomass research labs in our country. We're finalizing our investment agreement with Renfuel, which will represent $3 million over three years. And we've commenced technical conversations with Prem. Prem is one of nearly a dozen industry participants that we're currently in discussions with in the United States and abroad. We look forward to announcing our commercial agreements when they're actually completed. Our team, including me, has never been more busy as we are on this right now. The market's exploding, especially around sustainable aviation fuel demand, and we're on top of it. Grotto, there, there was also an increased level of interest in uh, the mining business slash uh, GenMAT. If you can uh, comment on the mineral resource and your ability to expand, I think that would be appreciated by stakeholders. Sure, Trevor. You know, we're seeing expanded, continuously expanded external interest in our mining assets. 
while we and Gem Matt focus on the whole southern part of the district with our Dayton Gold and Silver resource and the nearly two mile mineral trend extension into the Spring Valley. Gold recently pushing through highs of 2250 certainly helps. We're building a mine plan for Dayton that in our assessment to date was already economically and technically robust at $1,800 gold. With nearly 300,000 ounces of gold equivalent resources there, every hundred dollars adds potentially 30 million in cash generated from that mine. We also have over 800 acres of private lands that should have extremely valuable post-productive uses. So we're building an exceptionally valuable mine and we're building an exceptionally value post-mine production plan for our Dayton and Spring Valley mineral assets. It's worthwhile reiterating that our expectation on monetizing our other non-mining assets this year have not changed at all. We're progressing on multiple discussions and again, we'll announce those transactions once they're completed. Thanks, Grotto. And you know, I think it'd be helpful if you can comment on the other milestone trends, in particular the metals recycling business, just since we're talking about, you know, the milestones topic and report and uh, how near term that uh, business is at the moment. Sure. Uh, you know, metals, metals has really hit on their milestones, as I just mentioned previously, and they'll commence operating the facility fully continuously very, very soon here. They've already expanded or already submitted it for expanded storage and operating capacity. We're also preparing permits for our first industry scale facility. We look forward to providing guidance on this business as a whole. Once some of the operating variables have been nailed down, which is what we expect to do over the next few months. And for those listening, uh, just an FYI, the submissions as it relates to the milestones, uh, the not milestones field, there's only one answer that uh, those stakeholders can choose from. As for the strengths and weaknesses, multiple answers can be chosen. So the uh, most trending uh, milestones answer uh, is what you are seeing here. The additional comment I think would be worthwhile mentioning is uh, just to reiterate that Comstock has about 225 million in NOL or tax loss carry forwards that will shelter gains from sales of the side investment assets and future profits. Corrado, any final comments you'd like to conclude with? Sure, Trevor. Yeah, thank you. You certainly can expect a series of advancements and transactions announced soon in fuels, metals, mining and innovations, all advancing us towards our goal. The nature and type of companies and partners will only grow, establishing a world-class technology and commercialization platform. So it's very exciting what we have, it's very exciting what we're doing, and it's just as exciting with how we're expanding into it. I guess let me wrap it up by just thanking you again and your team for this quantitative approach to investor relations it's been very helpful to us internally, and we hope it's been the same for our growing shareholder base. I'd also like to personally thank those shareholders who participated in the survey. We look forward to hearing from more investors following our Q1 earnings call, expected at the end of this month, and discussing the results from our Q2 report in early July. Thank you, Corrado, and likewise. And to all followers of Comstock, we look forward to keeping you posted on the company's upcoming news, investor events, and sentiment reports throughout 2024. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us and reach out to us at ir at comstockinc.com. Again, that's ir at comstockinc.com, or you can schedule a call in the module at the bottom of this Q1 report. Thank you again. Looking forward to speaking soon.